everybody. So today we're going to have a go at making a mini wildlife pond. Um, so as you may know, having um, water in your garden is a really, really important thing to have if you're trying to attract wildlife. Um, so things like birds will come and drink from it, also hedgehogs will drink from it. Um, it's a great place for insects like dragonflies and damselflies. And of course you might get frogs who, and newts who um, lay their eggs in there as well. So it's a really great way to attract wildlife to your garden and also to help the wildlife that's already there. Um, now obviously it'd be lovely to be able to have a massive pond in your garden, but that's not possible for everybody. So today we're going to have a look at how we can make a mini pond, then just using an old mixing bowl, but you can use an old bucket, we can do some upcycling. Um, if you feed your birds fat balls, the buckets that they come in are really good for this. So just find yourself a watertight container, um, a roughly this size or bigger, whatever you've got really, um, and then we'll have a look at what you're going to do. So, the first thing is I'm going to put a bit of gravel in the bottom. So this will be a really good place for insects to hide and potentially lay their eggs um, and it also weights it down a little bit. Okay, so to start with I'm just going to put a bit of gravel in the bottom. Now in your pond it's really really important, if you can, to put some plants in there. So ideally you want a plant that sticks out of the water, so like a marginal plant, so that insects can climb out onto there, things like dragonflies when they're ready to emerge. Um, and you also need oxygenating plants to stop the water going stagnant. Um, so I'm going to start off with this, this is a lesser spearwort. Um, and if you can use native plants that's ideal, so I'll post a link to um, a website that sells native UK plants, um, so you can have a look at some of those and get some ideas. So I'm going to pop this in near the edge, and this plant wants to be covered sort of right up to the top. So it's probably a little bit too big for this container to be honest, but that's what I've got at the moment, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to push it up to the side and then I'm going to put a bit more of this gravel around the bottom just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to get some of my oxygenating plant. So this is pondweed. This is actually Canadian pondweed, which is not ideal. Um, so it's actually quite invasive in our um, natural waterways, but it's all I've got at the moment. So I'm going to put it in um, and this will is really valuable because it will put oxygen into the water which all the insects that are in there are going to need um, to be able to breathe. So I'm going to pop this in. What I've done is I've got a clump and I've just wrapped some wire around the bottom and I'm going to pop that into the bottom and then I'm going to use some bigger stones to sort of weight it down so that it stays submerged for that little bit there. Wait so you can see. So I've just put a few bigger stones around the bottom just to weight that down. And as it's photosynthesised, it will release oxygen, which will dissolve into the water. Something else that you can do to try and stop algae taking over um, is put some barley straw in the pond. Um, I've not tried this before, but I've heard it works. So I'm going to, I've got a little bit of barley straw here from my chickens. I've wrapped some wire around it into a bundle so it doesn't float everywhere. And I'm just going to put that in the bottom as well, just at the back here. And there's something that it releases that stops algae from sort of taking over. So I'll pop that in there, and put a stone on top of that as well to weight it down. Now, when you put your pond, if you've got things coming to drink from it, it's really important that they, if they fall in that they can get out. Um, you don't want them to, especially something like this, if they fall in, fell in, they wouldn't be able to get out because it's quite smooth and steep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this big rock in here, just down the side. about. Yep. So now if a bird comes down and wants to drink it can perch on there and it can get down to the water and if there's frogs or froglets swimming around in here they'll be able to climb out in here and jump out. Um, I've just got a few more stones here which I'm going to put around the bottom because they're great for things to hide under and also that's a little ramp. Um, and that's pretty much our pond. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this up with rainwater. Um, tap water actually has chemicals in it which can be detrimental to plants and so if you can use rainwater, or if you, if you haven't got any rainwater, if you just leave some tap water standing for a few days so that the chlorine disappears, that's fine as well. Um, so use um, yeah, rainwater if possible. I'm going to fill it up, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it um, in quite a sunny place. Um, if it's really shady, then it will go stagnant and horrible. So make sure it's got some sun so the plants can photosynthesize. Um, and also what I'm going to do, I'm going to sink it into the ground slightly and then I'm going to make a ramp up around the edge so that our hedgehogs and frogs and stuff can get into it as well as out of it, okay? Because if they can't, they can't get in then it's not going to be any use to them. So I'm going to put some big stones and I'm going to sink it into the ground, make a little bit of a beach around the edge. 
Okay, so let's put some water in here. See what the finished article looks like. So there you've got your pond. Um, now I filled that up here just to show you what it looks like. Um, but what I would recommend definitely for waiting to fill it up until it's in the place that you want to put it in because obviously it's quite heavy now. It's going to be quite difficult to move. Um, and yeah, so for more information about how to do this, there's an online booklet that you can download. Um, and the great thing about this is now it's a, you've done it, you can keep coming back and seeing if any insects have made their home in there and um, watch out for birds, maybe having a drink or a bath. And um, if you put some sand around the edge, you might even be able to see if there's any footprints of hedgehogs or other animals coming in to have a drink as well, perhaps at night when you're in bed. Um, so it's a really lovely activity. You can keep checking back and um, your local wildlife will really appreciate it. So that's a really good one to try at home. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.